Hi, I'm Mitko and this is the Quick Start video for Forever. This is going to be a very fast paced tutorial that quickly goes over the very basics of our endless runner system and if you'd like to go more in depth with it, you can start by watching our getting started video on our YouTube channel which is... Yeah, 26 minutes long. This... This is why we need this video. So let's go! In order to start using Forever in our project, we need to create a level generator. So I'll create a new game object and attach the level generator component to it. Right away we need to fix two issues. The first one is that we don't have a path generator. The path generator is the path algorithm that is going to generate the level path for us. Forever comes with a bunch of path generators and you can easily write your own too. But let's use an existing one. Right click in your project tab, create, forever, path generator. I'm going to go with the random path generator. And I'm not gonna touch anything for now. I'm gonna go back to the level generator and assign the random path generator into the path generator field of the level generator. Now let's go over to the level error. It says that we don't have any levels and we need to define at least one. So just click the new level button which will create a level for us. Now what we need to do is set up this level to work. Let's click on the level and this is going to open the level window. Inside we have this add sequence button which I'm going to click once and this is going to create a segment sequence for us. Inside this sequence we need to put level segments. And level segments are the building blocks of forever. We're now going to create some prefabs that we're going to use as level segments and we'll assign them inside the sequence here. So close the window. And in this case I'm going to use Unity's primitives, so game object, 3D object, plane, and I'm going to assign this grass material to the plane. Now what I need to do is add a level segment component, otherwise the level sequence is not going to accept it when we make it into a prefab. So add component, level segment. And inside the level segment, we need to set the mesh of this plane to bend along the generated path. So expand object, select the plane object, this is going to open the extrusion settings window, and then bend mesh. Also if you're going to be using collision, set the mesh collider to copy because this is going to copy the bent mesh over to the mesh collider. If you have a custom mesh collider, then you could send it to extrude, or if you don't use mesh colliders at all, set it to bypass. Now something really important, when you save level segments as prefabs, you must not use the standard way of saving by getting the object and dragging it into the project tab. Instead, we need to use the save buttons that are provided inside the level segment component here. This is very important because clicking the save button is going to run some editor logic that is going to cache some values and make it possible for the level segment to be extruded quickly during runtime. So in this case, because I already created a prefab out of the plane, I'm just going to click save. Otherwise I need to click save as and specify where to save it. Okay, so we have one segment. Let's go over to the level generator, open the level and drag the plane inside the sequence. Now right now the sequence is set to random, which means that if we have more segments here, the sequence is going to pick one random segment. And the count is set to one, which means that it's going to only spawn a single segment and then move on with the next thing. But because this is the only sequence of the only level, what is going to happen is this level is going to keep repeating itself. So we're going to get as many planes as we need. But if you want to set a level to be endless, you can set the count of the sequence to zero. This sequence is now going to spawn segments in indefinitely until you stop it using code. Okay, so let's play. And right away what we see is a straight line made out of planes. And this is very boring, but this is because we didn't set up our path generator. So I'm going to go over to the random path generator we created. And the first thing I'm going to do is reduce the control points per segment from five to three. This is going to create less points per plane. So if I press play and select one of the planes, you can see that the plane only has three control points. This is the first one, second one, and the third one. Now let's make it more interesting. This time I'm going to expand the orientation panel, enable pitch, yo, enable the restriction for those two, and put in some values. Now when I press play, we get a more interesting result. Now the generated level is a little short, so I'm going to go over to the level generator and set the generate segments ahead property to 10. This is going to create 10 additional level segments after the first level segment, so in total we are going to start with 11 level segments. Okay, so let's rename this to segment 1. Now let's duplicate it and start adding some obstacles. I'm going to add it to the scene and then create a new cube. Set it scale to 2 and apply the crate material to it. Now we have crates. I'm going to leave this cube like this in the middle of the plane and just make it a child of the segment. Then I'll go over to the segment object and click save. Now we have two segments. One with a cube, one with just the plane. Let's create more versions. Click Ctrl D and this time instead of going inside the scene, I'll just double click the prefab. And here I can add more cubes and rearrange the existing ones. Now because this is Unity 2018.3 and this is the prefab scene mode, you're not going to see any save buttons inside the level segment here. This is because our operations run automatically when you exit the prefab mode. So when editing a level segment inside the prefab mode, you don't need to worry about pressing save. Let's create one last segment. Or maybe one more. 
And here we go. We got a bunch of segments with a bunch of crates. Now let's add these segments to the level generator. Open the level and what I'm gonna do is set this sequence to ordered. Ordered sequences are going to spawn the segments in the order they're added. And you can rearrange the segment order by simply dragging them over. But for this sequence, I'm only going to leave the first segment. Then I'm going to add a new sequence and set it to random and set its count to zero. Then in this sequence, I'm going to add all the segments. So what this is going to do is when we run our level generator, it is always going to spawn an empty segment first so that we give our player enough time to react. And then we're going to proceed with spawning random segments forever. So hit play, looks pretty good. And now finally, we need a player. So in this case, I'm going to create yet another cube assign this red material to it. And in order to create a player, I need one of these components in forever. Basic runner, custom lane runner, lane runner or project player. I go over each of these components in our basic runners video on YouTube, which is goddamn 19 minutes long. Okay, anyways, going back to the quick video, let's add a lane runner. The lane runner is a component that is going to make this cube traverse the generated level and it is also going to add lane switching functionality so we can control our player left and right. Now first let's set the speed to 5, then toggle is player. This option is going to tell the level generator that this object is the player so that the level generator knows when to create new segments ahead. If this option is off when traversing the level, the level generator is not going to create new segments and eventually you're going to run out of segments and reach the end of the level. This is the total width of the lanes. Right now it's set to 5, I'm going to set it to 7. This is the count of the lanes, I'm going to leave it at 3. And the start lane is the lane that we start in, 2 is the middle one, 1 will be the left lane and 3 will be the right lane. Lane switch speed is the speed that we switch lanes with. 5 is okay for me. And this curve is really important to have it set up. You can use the default linear curve. You can set up your own, or as I like to do, I use this one. This curve defines the motion that we switch the lanes with. This is an ease out curve, which is very responsive, and then towards the end, very smooth. The start mode, I'm going to set it to distance, and set a start distance of 3. This is going to offset our player 3 units from the start of the first segment. Now let's parent the camera to the cube, move it over a little bit closer, and higher, and let's check it out. So you can see that as soon as the level got generated, our player started moving along the level. But there are two problems. The first one is that we cannot control it. And the second one is that we clip through the floor. And through everything else. So the unity cube is one unit tall. Inside the motion foldout of the lane runner, we have the offset. I'm going to set an offset for the cube of 0.5 units, which is going to position the cube just above the ground. And now let's handle the control. We're going to need to write our own script for control, but don't worry, it's really easy. So right click, create, C sharp script, call it my player, open it up. And the first thing we need to do is add the using dream tech forever directive. Then let's get a reference of our lane runner. So let's create a new lane runner variable and inside start, get the reference to it. Now let's get some input from the keyboard. We check if the left arrow is down. It's important that we use get key down, not get key. And then say, there we go. Now I can move left. And for moving right, we need to do the opposite. Check for the right arrow key and say plus plus. Don't forget to attach the script to the player. And let's play it. There we go. We can move now. And we can evade obstacles. But we do still clip through them. If you'd like to fix this, set the update mode to fixed update and the physics mode to rigid body and add a rigid body to our player. Let's lock the rotation and now our player can use collision. Let's go over to the segments that have crates in them. Select each crate and set its tag to our own tag. I've made this tag called obstacle. Now inside our player code, let's create the onCollision enter method. And inside the method, check if the collider of the collision has the obstacle tag. And if this is true, then runner follow false. Hit play and see what it does. There we go. So this is it. Now we have our first player, which bumps into obstacles and follows our generated level nicely. This is how simple it is to get started with forever. Check out our other videos to get to know our plugin better. And also, take a look at the documentation provided inside DreamTech Forever user manual. We like to write a lot about our products. Thank you for watching and using Forever. I'm Mitko, see you in the next video.